I will be talking about uh, <coughs> uh, chronic lymphocyte leukemia. So we are switching again uh, uh, disease, and uh, which is the, the most common uh, uh, leukemia in, uh, among the adults in the Western world. And we will be talking about a study, a phase three randomized study um, uh, involving acalabrutinib, one of the new uh, BTK inhibitors. So a chronic lymphocyte leukemia, I have to say that this is a very exciting period for it for this disease because we have a number of the of uh, uh, novel drugs, uh, chemo-free drugs that have been approved and that uh, are uh, under development. Uh, but still, we are not able to cure the disease, so patients uh, uh, may relapse uh, uh, even after these very effective uh, therapies. And so, an issue is uh, uh, also that uh, uh, we have to find the therapies that are better tolerated for our patients as they have to take the, these drugs for many, many years. Uh, BTK inhibition is a well-known pathway in uh, uh, CLL. It's very effective. Uh, other drugs are uh, already also approved. And so it is definitely something that uh, is a key in the uh, treatment algorithm of CLL. The study I will be talking about is uh, uh, named ASCEND, and uh, it's the first uh, randomized control study um, uh, evaluating uh, uh, efficacy and safety of uh, acalabrutinib, this new BTK inhibitor that we already uh, proved to be effective and toler uh, tolerable in a phase one study published on the New England Journal of Medicine a few years ago. Um, it is also the first uh, randomized study comparing a, a BTK inhibitors uh, with, uh, uh, let's say, in mo as monotherapy with uh, uh, standard therapies, like uh, uh, on one side bendamastin plus rituximab, so a chemo immunotherapeutic uh, uh, regimen, or a novel combination of idelalizib, PIC kinase delta inhibitor plus rituximab. But the design is, is here. So we are talking about uh, relapsed refractory CLL, so patients who have been already treated at least once. Um, and uh, the, 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 the randomization includes on one side uh, either acalabrutinib, oral drug, uh, BTK inhibitor, um, or uh, on the other side, physician choice. Uh, so the physician had the possibility to choose between either a chemotherapeutic, a well-established chemotherapeutic uh, uh, regimen, a, a typical uh, second, third line treatment, bendamastin plus rituximab, or a, a chemo-free, uh, so let's, let's call it a novel uh, chemo-free, uh, which is already approved and utilized in the community, idelalizib plus uh, rituximab. Uh, Acala, again, is monotherapy, not in combination with uh, anything. So these are the results. Um, the therapy is effective. There is a reduction in the uh, risk of uh, progression and death by 69% uh, using calabrutinib. Uh, PFS, uh, progression-free survival, median P uh, PFS has not been reached for a calabrutinib. It is 16.5 uh, uh, months for uh, um, uh, the control arm, which is uh, including either uh, benamastin plus rituximab or idelalizib plus rituximab. And uh, uh, the median follow-up is 15.1. And just to compare the difference, because you can see it here visually, but at uh, 12 months, uh, um, the, the, risk, the patient who did not progress were 88% uh, with ACALA uh, and were 68% in the control arm. So already after one year, the difference was quite uh, uh, obvious. Um, talking about safety, which is uh, also a, a, an extremely important uh, um, uh, issue in uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, in particular when we talk about therapies that have, been take, that have to be taken uh, continuously until progression or uh, intolerance. Uh, the safety profile of acalabrutinib uh, didn't show anything ex unexpected uh, compared to the initial study, the phase one. And uh, uh, in particular, it, shows, it showed a better profile compared to uh, uh, either chemotherapy, so less uh, neutropenia uh, or any bone marrow toxicity compared to uh, chemotherapy, and also compared to idelalizib plus rituximab, which is, as I said, a chemo-free treatment, but uh, has, uh, for example, a high frequency of uh, diarrhea and colitis and other side effects. Um, the typical uh, side effect of acalabrutin, headache, is there, but it's a transient. A couple of weeks, the patient usually don't even need anything to treat. And it's really also transient uh, during the day, so a couple of hours after taking the pill, and then uh, it fades away. So, um, in general, acalabrutin was very well tolerated. Uh, other typical uh, um, side effects of BTK inhibition, like bleeding, were definitely uh, <coughs> very infrequent. Only one-fourth of the patient will have it 
and uh, uh, atrial fibrillation, which is again a typical uh, um, side effect of uh, BTK inhibition, was shown only in 5% of the patients. So in conclusion, uh, here I presented the data of the ASCEND study, randomized phase three in relapsed refractory uh, patient, and uh, it shows that uh, uh, acalabrutin is more effective uh, and better tolerated than other um, established uh, and approved uh, treatments. And uh, uh, I have also to say that there's been a press release earlier this year um, showing, um, reporting um, um, another study uh, involving acalabrutin in first line treatment naive patients uh, where uh, we don't know the, the details, but uh, the endpoints have been reached. So these two studies uh, will be uh, likely important to uh, achieve approval uh, of the drug and therefore maybe expanding the possibility of treatment for our patients. Thank you very much for your attention. with hematology news. So how does this compare with ibrutinib? Um, has ibrutinib been used in this population? And is it One million dollar question. Yeah. Uh, I, I, we will be able to answer very soon, I hope. Uh, or let's say soon, because there is an ongoing trial comparing head-to-head -head, uh, acalabrutin to ibrutinib. Uh, so we will be seeing uh, uh, efficacy and uh, uh, tolerability of the two drugs. So that will be uh, um, uh, the answer to your question. But just to in, speculate. Sorry, in monotherapy or in combination? In monotherapy. Okay. Both of them in monotherapy. Okay. Really very easy, I would say, obvious uh, uh, trial. It's taking very long because, of course, also ibrutin is a very, uh, very good drug. Uh, um, and therefore, uh, uh, it's really, uh, we expect any time to see results. But uh, in general, as I said, this is the first time that a BTK inhibitor has been used as monotherapy and compared to uh, either chemotherapy or the novel therapies. Because ibrutin, for example, has been compared to um, uh, ofatumumab <laughs> or to uh, chlorambucil or chlorambucil plus uh, um, uh, as a monotherapy only to chlorambucil. So uh, it's difficult really to compare because the, the comparators and the, the control arms are completely different. Uh, Bendamastin plus Rituxa is the typical uh, second line, I would say, treatment. Uh, there has been no head-to-head uh, -head, uh, uh, trial with uh, novel therapies like Idela, so I think this is the novelty of, of our study. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? What about subset responses? Do you see this? Uh, we don't see differences, and now we are quite used to this. With the, when we don't use chemotherapy, all the typical subset, genetic subset, mm -hmm. P53 patient with the P53 mutations or with deletion 17P, um, that you could really stratify and see differences when you use chemotherapy, immunochemotherapy. Now it doesn't show anymore. Uh, in this study, they were uh, allowed to be uh, enrolled, and again, uh, we didn't see any difference. Uh, also, patients with unmutated immunoglobulin genes, which is again predictor of uh, uh, poor response to immunochemotherapy. Here, they, they didn't sh show any difference. So, mutated and unmutated patients uh, were responding uh, as well. So. Uh, we definitely have to, to, to think about uh, uh, new science to find the predictors of, uh, of uh, uh, um, uh, loss of response to these new therapies because indeed, as I said, we are not curing our patients. So uh, even if after many years these patients will progress, uh, some of these patients at least, so we have to really to identify who will benefit, for example, of a combination of uh, these new therapies. Okay. And if you could start a new trial tomorrow without spending four years defending it, negotiating it, and financing it, um, what would you do with this agent? I think that the future uh, for this agent, like for e every agent in CLL, is that probably we, yeah, we have to get rid of the continuous treatment for um, obvious reasons, for uh, uh, economical reasons also, but also in order to avoid uh, clonal selection and, and so we don't keep pressure. Uh, on, the, on the clonal cells. Um, so I would do combination uh, that allow us to, uh, uh, to get to a clear, definite, deep response so that we can stop uh, treatment. 
Um, a Calabrutin has been already, uh, as I mentioned earlier, studied with Obinutuzumab in mm. first line, um, and uh, uh, maybe that will already uh, lead to deeper responses. Uh, an obvious uh, combination will be with the venetoclax. Um, so anything that can help us to reduce the time of treatment will be beneficial.